Uh, so we have Barry Medor on the line here. That's whose face you see. I'm I'm Ryan, and I'm don't have my video on because we're hoping that it will, the video will stay not so choppy. But we're going to try to do a little conversation starter for our new media producers meetup today, and have have Barry sort of act as our conversation catalyst. And then maybe if other people like this video and they want to use that as a conversation starter in other areas, they can do that too. So we're going to put this up on YouTube and anybody can really use it. It'll be Creative Commons. So Barry is in St. Paul, Minnesota, and you have a, you have a background in public media. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so, so there are a lot of people now with, with, sort of newer online communities like message boards, social networks, and they're hiring these people, community managers or social media managers, and people are treating it like it's a new job description. But is in your experience, is that really a new job description? Is it really like a new title just because it's the internet now? I absolutely don't think so. Um, I believe that the all the qualities of a good uh, community organizer um, have existed for quite some time. The methodologies uh, or the vehicles for doing that uh, organizing um, have changed. And every time there is a new media or new technology, they get employed um, for that. My experience, direct experience in that uh, goes back uh, starting in the early 90s. So not all that long ago, but long ago enough to, to predate uh, um, the ubiquity of the internet. Um, I worked for an organization called Independent Television Service, or ITVS, that was created by a group of independent filmmakers and documentary makers who lobbied Congress uh, under the idea that public television was not serving its mission, primarily to um, provide media and services to underserved audiences, like um, uh, the language actually was underserved audiences um, especially minorities and children. Uh, and this group actually, uh, uh, over time, got Congress to agree with them and set aside part of Corporation for Public Broadcasting's money to, uh, to set up an organization that would create television shows that would fit that need. Um, and I was a member of the organization that was set up to do that. And what we realized or what we uh, really wanted to do was to do more than just get programs made. Uh, we wanted to get them seen, but we also wanted them to be utilized, not just seen. A lot of the programs that, that were being made by the independent producers, independent uh, filmmakers, were um, uh, made for specific audiences or about specific audiences that had uh, community organizing needs. So, for instance, we did a program about living, living with AIDS or a series about living with AIDS. Um, and uh, lots of other different types of programs like that. So our job was to organize around those issues in the communities where, uh, where it was important, using the television program as sort of a, a vehicle, not the end, uh, only end product. Um, and so I think the same thing is happening now with websites uh, and open source media and with blogs and everything, everything around that. Um, but uh, so I think that the bringing together different media and uh, using all of the resources that you have available to you uh, in order to bring people around a topic or, or around an idea or to organize or uh, uh, is not new, uh, but it, but is important uh, and goes back uh, in in media and public media as well, even just as recently as 20 years ago. Um, I can think of one very targeted example of this and how it worked. Um, there was a woman who uh, was working on a documentary and discovered that she actually had um, a certain type of cancer that was very rare um, uh, for somebody of her age, which was her early uh, 20s uh, or uh, 19 to 21, I can't remember how old. And she ended up making a personal documentary about um, how that impacted um, her life and the surgeries that she used, that she, that she had, but instead of just using that documentary as a as a as a sad story about uh, this particular case, she used it to organize a class action lawsuit 
against the drug company um, that was the source of the cancer that, that she had, uh, um, having ingested it in utero, and then took that around the country um, to lots of PERGs and other community organizing groups, uh, pollution control agencies, to raise awareness about uh, environmental estrogens, which was only peripherally um, a part of what her documentary was about, but it became a, an organizing tool and a force that, that uh, spawned lots of um, great uh, action and regulation uh, and just uh, raising lots, lots of awareness. Uh, and I always looked to her energy and her use of, of, of the medium of, of television um, as an inspiration for, for this type of activity. Cool, cool. So uh, hopefully that's that's something for us here at our in real life meetup to think about. Oh, this, one, uh, one last, can I say one last thing? Yeah, absolutely. I, I forgot um, that this is even more apropos than I thought. Uh, that actually doing the outreach around that show or helping her do this was my first experience using the internet as well. Um, the, the World Wide Web at the time was pretty young, but we realized with no budget that we should utilize it. In this was 93, maybe. Um, I created the first website I ever created doing straight HTML uh, and created an online bulletin board where, uh, which actually spawned uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of of people writing in uh, to say that they didn't um, realize that they they also were exposed to this same situation and asked for resources and we posted resources and it became a um, it became a resource in a way that uh, that flyers and um, her personally going to or just watching the the program on television couldn't do so that was an, another another tool or another another way that we extended the use of the documentary very cool very cool so, so I mean, I guess one thing that's that's slightly different that we do have now is instead of there just having to be one central site for all those comments to live, you can now distribute them, you know, RSS and feeds and various different services that are based on those sorts of things. Absolutely. To get it everywhere, you know, to, to distribute the conversation instead of centralize it. Yes, I think that the tools that we now have available to us uh, build on the foundation of what we were able to use back then. But I think it was um, not to take any credit for it, but our use and other people that were doing similar things around that time kind of laid the foundation for the types of things that are possible now. So I'm very excited to see how what we have now gets extended and built upon to create the next new thing, whatever that may be. Great, great. So hopefully uh, people sitting here or wherever they may be can, you know, just start with your your story and your experience and maybe they can even get in touch with you so uh if they want to find Absolutely. you barry how do they do that um let's see well you can reach me at uh, i work at advantage labs and i have an email address there uh, barry b-a-r-r-y at advantage labs.com um i'm also on twitter at b matter b-m-a-d-d-e-r uh, and those are probably the two most direct ways of getting hold of me. Um, and I'd be happy to go further with um, whatever direction you want to discuss these things. Awesome. Thanks, Barry. Sure. Thank you, Ryan.